Chapter 6 Harmony in the Self Understanding Myself Recap In the previous chapter, we discussed the human being as the coexistence of the self and the body. We discussed categorically the needs, activities and response of the self and the body. We understood the self as a consciousness entity and the body as a material entity. We saw that the self makes all the decisions regarding itself as well as regarding the body. There is harmony in the human being when the needs of the self as well as the needs of the body are fulfilled. The need of the self is continuous happiness. It is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling which are activities of consciousness. The need of the body is physical facility. It is fulfilled by physiochemical things which are material in nature. Having explored the harmony between the self and the body, now we will explore into the activities of the self and see how harmony can be ensured among all the activities of the self, ultimately leading to harmony in the self resulting into a state of continuous happiness. Let us take a deeper look and try to investigate into the self. Activities of the self We can easily see that we are involved in various activities all the time. Activities like eating, sleeping, playing, studying, etc. are going on. In chapter 5, we try to distinguish between the activities of the body, the activities of the self and the activities where both the self as well as body are involved. When we say activities of the self, we are generally referring to our imagination. You would be able to see that something going on in your imagination. It may be some desires thoughts, expectations. It is necessary to understand these activities to be able to understand harmony in the self. In figure 6.1, three sets of the activities of the self are mentioned. These are the initial activities that we will study. It is not just a matter of reading about these activities, but it is rather important to see these activities going on in you. It is important to experientially validate what is being discussed here. Only then will it make any difference in your living. Your happiness or unhappiness all depends on your own state. So let us start exploring into the activities of the self. Desire is about what you want to be. It is the name given to the activity of imaging. So desire is the power for the activity of imaging. What we can actually observe within is the activity of imaging. You make an image within for what you want to be. You have a desire to be happy. So you make an image of being in a state of happiness. Thought is the power for the activity of analyzing. Trying to work out the options of how to fulfill your desire. If you have a desire to be happy, you analyze various possibilities for how to be happy. You may consider various options. Ensuring happiness within, getting happiness from favorable feeling from other, getting happiness from favorable sensation. These are various thoughts about how to be happy. Expectation is the power for the activity of selecting what to get from outside. Selecting is based on tasting. 
If you consider happiness to be something you get from favorable sensation, like when you eat tasty food, then you set up an expectation for varieties of tasty food. The food you choose is based on your taste. Your selection is based on your taste, be it food, music or any other sensation. To take an example, if you desire to be the owner of a big house, you make an image. This desire gives rise to thoughts about how to be owner of a big house and you consider many options. One of the options may be building a big house, other options may be buying a big house, renting a big house and so on. All these are thoughts about how to be owner of a big house. The big house is your expectation. By ensuring your expectation, you think you will fulfill your desire to be owner of a big house. We can see that desire is about what to be and thought is about how to fulfill the desire, how to be and expectation is about what to get from outside. Now check if you can see, be aware of your desire, your thought and expectation. Activities of the self are continuous. We have the power of desire that is we have the capacity for the activity of imaging. So we are able to image. We have the power of thought. That is, we have the capacity for the activity of analyzing. So we are able to analyze. We have the power of expectation. That is, we have the capacity for the activity of selecting so we are able to select these powers are inexhaustible these activities are continuous going on all the time try to observe if these activities are going on in you or not check if these activities are going on in you they are not going on in you you are not able to see them. They may be going on, but you are not aware of them. Next, check if these activities are going on all the time or not. Are you having some desire or the other all the time? Like the desire to be happy. Is that always there or sometimes you have no desire at all? Are you having some thought or the other continuously? Or there are times when you stop thinking. Are you having one of the other expectation all the time? Or there are times when you have no expectation? Like, do you always have the expectation to be to keep the body comfortable? And you keep selecting some body posture or the other? Start by observing your activities during the day and later you can make the observations during the night also if you are not able to see that it is continuous you have to go on finding out go on exploring checking whether there is any time when there is no desire when there is no thought when there is no expectation the activities of imaging, analyzing and selecting are always going on, whether we are aware of them or we are not aware of them. They are continuous. Activities together constitute imagination. Now, if you put these activities together, it is called imagination. We may not immediately be able to observe our desire, thought, expectations distinctly, but it may be easier to see that something is going on within. 
some imagination or the other is going on in us all the time. You can look into yourself and find out whether the, this imagination is going on in you all the time or you can stop it. It is important to look into yourself to find out. So, what do you find? If you observe yourself, you will find that some imagination or the other is going on all the time. Even if you observe yourself for five minutes, you will find some 10, 20, 30 imaginations taking place. You may do this exercise to just observe yourself for five minutes and see what is going on inside you. Imagination gets expressed in behavior and work. All the decisions are made in our imagination. The decision regarding behavior with human being is taken at the level of imagination. Similarly, for any work we do with the rest of nature, the decisions are taken at the level of imagination. Can you see that? You may select to express something outside as behavior or work or you may select not to express anything outside. That decision is also taken at the level of imagination. When it comes to the expression outside, the body is used as an instrument. In behavior, you may use the body to share your feeling of respect for your friend by way of words. In work with the rest of nature, you may involve your body to sow the wheat, seeds and so on. Your behavior or work is simply an expression of your imagination in which the body is involved. When your imagination is in harmony with your natural acceptance, it leads to harmony within and therefore a state of happiness. If this imagination is in contradiction, with your natural acceptance, it leads to disharmony and unhappiness. It is very important to see what is going on in your imagination, to be aware of your imagination, because our basic aspiration of happiness depends upon it. This is what we have to start looking into. One of our colleagues related this incident. I remember conducting a workshop in a small town for a group of teachers. I asked them, can you tell me what is your desire? One of them said, as long as I am alive, I want unlimited wealth and after death, I want moksha, liberation. Now these are quite contradictory desires. When he is working for unlimited wealth, he will keep worrying about what will happen to his liberation. When he is working for liberation, he will keep thinking about what will happen to that unlimited wealth. With these contradictions, he will be in a state of unhappiness. Can you see that? When we are comfortable within, when we are in harmony within, when we are in a state of happiness within, our behavior and work is also likely to be harmonious. When we are uncomfortable, in disharmony, confusion and unhappiness within, our behavior and work is also likely to be disharmonious. We are taking this example again and again just to clarify the point. When you are thinking of taking revenge from someone or for two hours, and after two hours you drop the idea, is there any execution outside? There is no execution at the level of body, no execution in behavior and no execution in work. However, a lot has taken place at the level of imagination and this becomes the source of your happiness or unhappiness. For these two hours, you are thinking of taking revenge of opposition which is not naturally acceptable to you 
for these two hours you were in a state of contradiction of unhappiness the other person may not even know of it as you have not expressed it outside similarly when you think for two hours about a friend with a feeling of respect about how to express your feeling of respect to him you are in harmony within because the feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to you when you are in harmony within you are in a state of happiness of course if you express this feeling of respect to your friend it will lead to happiness for your friend also since respect is naturally acceptable to him as well observe your own state of imagination and try to correlate your expression in terms of behavior and work when is your behavior fulfilling for the other when is your work mutually enriching find out if imagination is going on or not going on is it going on continuously or there is a point of time where there is no imagination taking place can you see that you decide at the level of imagination and that your behavior and work is just the expression of your imagination can you see that you use your body as and when required for expressing your decisions you may be aware of it or you, you may not be aware of it so keep on observing and keep on verifying this while the self is central to human being if you look at the self this imagination is central to the self in the sense that happiness and unhappiness depends on the state of imagination with that it also connects the self to the world outside in terms of behavior with human being and work with the rest of nature it further connects to natural acceptance within in that sense the imagination plays a central role state of imagination we may find it difficult at first to observe our imaginations we may then be able to see some of them maybe with gaps in between we may remember some imaginations and not others some imaginations may be connected with each other some may be disconnected or even very contrary to each other you may remember there was a tv serial called mungeri lal ke haseen sapne beautiful dreams of uh, mungeri lal it is about the daydream dreams of a person called mungeri lal what it depicts in each of the episode is that in a uh, first minute he is a peon uh, sitting outside in a office on a stool and some and soon he takes off into his imagination for some 20 minutes of that episode and in the last one minute he realizes that he is a peon uh, sitting outside the office on his stool and these 20 minutes he imagines all kind of a uh, very interesting things now if we if you start looking into yourself you will find that it is not only mongeri lal who is having these imaginations we all are having such imaginations one after the other we may or uh, may not be aware of our imaginations we may or may not be able to find out uh, where they are coming from but imaginations are going on in each one of us as you are reading this book you can find out what is going on in your imagination even in 5 minutes so many imaginations will be taking place one after the other are you able to see that are you aware of them how much time your attention is in the book and how much time you are Im- imagining other things to comprehend one paragraph you may be able to observe that you have to read it more than once even if it is of interest to you that is because you are 
thinking of many other things in between while reading when you look at the things to which you uh, your attention goes to those are the things you consider important sometimes you think what is written in the book is important and sometimes you may think of your friends who have gone for a movie that is why when we are conducting a class for this course we keep repeating the important points many times because we have an idea about what may be happening in the students they may be going from one imagination to other by the time we speak something we state some important point the student picks up a few words and then he she takes off he she starts imagining something something else and so on for 10 minutes he or she is off the class in her own imagination and he or she does not know what is going on in in the class 10 minutes later he or she comes back and tries to trace what is being talked about so you see we are clear that every student wants to know wants to understand we also have an idea about their ability to focus by keeping both these things in mind uh, we write the content on the board we also keep repeating 10 times 20 times so that even if he or she comes back after 15 minutes he or she should be able to find out what is being talked about to get the point being discussed slowly over time things settle down as he or she is able to see the relevance of what is being discussed then her attention stays for more time on the discussion and we can go faster an example has been shown in the figure 62 it shows the way imagination goes while a student is sitting in the classroom the teacher is giving an assignment and the student is written down the assignment suddenly he the student remembers his friend who is planning to go for a movie and he recalls the first time he saw a movie with them many scenes may flash before him of the escapades of the hero and the heroine a loud thud of uh, the dropping duster brings him back to the classroom the board has now been filled up with 20 questions for the assignment anup sees his notebook where only the first question has been written surprised at that he starts writing the question he thinks that he can't catch up with the teacher's pace so he starts planning how to get a copy of the questions he will get it from the the notes of one of his friends again he slips back to the imagination about the movie anup also wants to be a scientist have a big house with a lab in the basement he wants to make a nice family but he has to get some decent grades for this he thinks and so he goes one imagination after the other at this point you may try to identify the desire the thoughts and the selections one desire is leading to many thoughts selecting one of them and further analyzing it and so on so try to identify the basis for the selection the basis for comparing if you try to trace your own imaginations you will get an idea of the activities going on in you you will find out that you self are deciding the content of your imagination you will find out that your imagination stays on those contents that you consider valuable consider important when you do this exercise you will find that many of your imaginations are in harmony with each other some are contrary to each other or contrary to your natural acceptance 
find out how you feel when your imagination are contrary to each other are you comfortable or uncomfortable you will find that only when your imaginations are in line with your natural acceptance it leads to happiness only when your imaginations are in harmony with each other it leads to happiness this is a significant observation to make this points to the fact that your happiness and unhappiness depends upon your own imagination if you are not aware of your imaginations they are still going on making you happy or unhappy all without your awareness once you start looking at your imagination becoming aware of your desire thought and expectation you will be able to find out the state of your imagination I refer to the figure 63 your imagination could be well organized in harmony or it could be a random mixture of harmony and contradiction it could be a uh, in harmony or in contradiction with your natural acceptance what do you find is your imagination well organized or random or nothing seems to be happening or you are unaware of what is going on if imagination is significant because all the uh, decisions are made here everything we feel everything we think and everything we do is decided here the state of imagination gives us a very precise idea about our life if the imagination is well organized and in harmony life will be in harmony it will be happy on the other hand if the imagination is random and confused so will the life be sometimes happiness sometimes unhappiness find out which state is desirable and what your current state of imagination is it will give you an idea about yourself possible sources of imagination preconditioning sensation and natural acceptance the seed or root of the imagination is the desire as we have seen a small desire expands in thought and further expands in expectation if we can be aware of our desire we can check if it is in line with our natural acceptance or not before expanding it further in our imagination now the next question that we want to investigate into the desire where is it coming from if you find it hard to pinpoint the desire look into the content of your imagination as a whole we want to find out what is the motivation that is driving our imagination if you look at this desire thought and expectation what is the source of or motivation who is deciding on them are we deciding them ourselves or is it someone else making the decision like parents family members friends teachers the social environment etc for example you want to come first in the class is it really your own desire did you decide it yourself or it came from your parents or it came from your teachers or it came from your friends or it came from the social environment what is it we don't usually ask this question as to where it is coming from it looks like we are deciding but when we question deeper that how these desires came then we we may find that it came from the family from the teachers from the friends and so on if you look into it refer figure 64 you will find that there are three possible sources of motivation for imagination one preconditioning two sensation and three natural acceptance preconditioning as a source of motivation for imagination 
A dominant source of imagination is preconditioning. Preconditioning means the beliefs, the notions, the norms, the ideas, views, assumptions, dictums, goals, etc. picked by oneself or prevailing in the family, in the society which may influence our imagination. For example, if parents say 10 times you have to come first in the class, your desire gets conditioned and you have the desire to come first in the class. If your friend also says you have to come first in the class, if your teacher also says you have to come first in the class, you get a strong desire to come first in the class. We tend to pick up whatever preconditioning is there around us in society, in family, in school without verifying it for ourselves. If you ask yourself whether you want to come first in the class or you want to understand what is being taught, what is the answer that you get? What is your natural acceptance? Given all the choices, you will like to understand what is being taught in the class, provided it relates to your happiness and prosperity. That is your natural acceptance. However, you desire to come first in the class because somehow you may have now started relating to your happiness or under the pressure or influence of your parents, your teachers, your friends or the society around. It may not be your natural acceptance, but you have made it your desire without verifying it for yourself. Like this, you can see that a large percentage of your desires are motivated by preconditioning. They are not your natural acceptance, but you have made them your desire under some influence or pressure. You may not even be aware of it. If you are not even aware of them, they are riskier for you as they might mislead your desires or you may not even notice it. In fact, a little awareness will show that the way we dress, what we select to eat, the way we talk, the way we behave, most of these are coming from our preconditioning. One of our friends related an example about a metro city of India which he visited 15 years back. He along with his friends was going to meet someone at his house. In the metro train, he found that most of the youngsters were wearing torn trousers. He was quite surprised to see this as he was in a metro city. He naively asked one of his friends if people in the city are facing some economic crisis. The friend was surprised and asked what happened. He said, people are wearing torn clothes. The trousers are torn at the bottom. The friend laughed and replied, don't you know this is the fashion today? Now this was quite unexpected for him and he kept thinking, if they have to wear torn clothes, why do they need? To get it stitched. But you know, this is the fashion and this fashion means some preconditioning has been created around. So now we are paying for stitching the trouser and then we are paying for tearing the trouser. Similarly, those heels of fashion, fashion of high heels, low heels and it keeps changing every few months. Our preconditioning is changing and we keep changing the clothes and shoes. Does it happen with you? Find it out. You may get so many things from your experience. Our preconditioning keeps on deciding our desires, thoughts and expectations. Can you see that? The prevailing preconditioning is one major source of motivation for imagination. Sensations as another source of motivation for imagination. Another major source of our desire, our imagination, is the sensation. Sensation is the information we get from body uh, through the five sense organs of sound, through ears, touch, through the skin, sight, through the eyes, taste through the tongue and 
smell through the nose for example you are going by the road and you see a very shining red car passing by now your imagination is dragged by that car you start desiring for that car now because you happen to like the color or you happen to like the shape speed or something else so this sensation has made an impact on you now you have a desire for the car does it happen sensation has a, an important role in our imagination see if that is how it has been happening many of our desires are governed by the sensation that we get from the sense organs and we may feel motivated to fulfill these uh, desires without being able to relate them to the continuity of happiness you happen to eat some exotic food and the taste motivates you to visit the restaurant again and again you listen to some music and the tunes the singer's sonorous voice engrosses your whole thought you now feel like listening to the music again and again your friend purchased a very soft woolen cloth and the very touch makes you think how to get one for you too now your neighbor uses some kind of a perfume which you happen to like and you start locating that perfume in the mall you like the way someone looks now you want that person as your uh, intimate friend now you will see that you have been accumulating desires just like that without verification and without being aware of how it came about these are the two major sources of motivation for your imagination one is the preconditioning and the other is sensation natural acceptance as the most authentic source of motivation for imagination the third source of motivation is our natural acceptance some people also refer it as the inner voice or conscience self verification on the basis of our natural acceptance can be the third possible source it may or may not be the predominant source of motivation currently but it can be the real source for deciding our desire our imagination try to find out what your natural acceptance is to respect or to disrespect others to protect your body or to damage your body to eat food that nurtures your body or to eat food that harms your body it is as simple as that if we are aware of our natural acceptance and we are aware of our imagination we can make the choices that are in line with our natural acceptance we will look into the third possibility in more detail as we go further so far we have discussed three possible sources of motivation for our imagination one is the prevailing preconditioning the second is sensation and, and the third possible source is verification on the basis of natural acceptance can you see this for yourself consequences of imagination from the three sources self organization or enslavement try to find out of all the desires you have what percentage of desires are coming from preconditioning and sensation and what percentage is motivated by your natural acceptance with this observation you can also see as long as your desires are coming from preconditioning you cannot be sure whether they are in harmony with your natural acceptance or not therefore you are not sure whether with these desires you will be in harmony or you will be in contradiction within therefore you are not sure whether you will be in a state of happiness within or unhappiness within similarly 
when desires are based on sensation you are not very sure whether they are in line with your natural acceptance or not so there again you are not very clear whether it will lead to state of harmony and happiness within or contradiction and unhappiness within we can recall the discussion on the prevailing notions about happiness from chapter 4 assuming that pleasing sensation is happiness is one notion we get bored with any indulgence after some time and want to shift to something else we keep shifting tv channels shifting from sweets to salty snacks shifting from one kind of music to another and so on <clears throat> now you can see that a particular sensation may match with our taste for a while but we don't find to continue with it since it does not necessarily ensure harmony in the self similarly the assumption that good feeling from the other will fetch us happiness can now be evaluated we like the taste of the feeling that we receive from the other however it does not ensure harmony within us it does not ensure right understanding and right feeling therefore the taste of the feeling is very short lived try to observe people who have such an assumption they keep expecting affirmation from the other a husband may keep expecting his wife to pay full attention to him and only to him all the time she may expect him to pick up her phone call every time on the first ring to answer her messages immediately to inform her of whom he is meeting every time and so on this sort of expectation is an indication that we have an assumption that the feeling from the other is a source of my happiness only when your desires are coming through your natural acceptance you can be sure that you are in harmony within because then your imagination is in line with the your natural acceptance only then you are sure to be in a state of harmony within and therefore in a state of happiness the only way to ensure harmony at the level of self is to ensure that all our desire thought and expectation all our imaginations are in line with our natural acceptance this is also the meaning of definite conduct we are able to see our natural acceptance our imagination is in harmony with our natural acceptance therefore we are in a state of harmony or happiness within our behavior and work are now in line with the harmony in line with our natural acceptance this is what we refer to as definite human conduct next ask yourself if your desires which are motivated by some preconditioning are really yours or are they borrowed from outside who decided to wear the torn clothes to show others that you are in tune with the latest fashion is that really you because if you have decided on the basis of your natural acceptance would you not have selected clothes that protect the body and also that are acceptable in the society if you look into this in depth it is the prevailing preconditioning that is deciding rather than your natural acceptance it is the other deciding rather than you in that sense the decision is dictated by the other refer to figure 65 it is a state of enslavement that indicates that we are dictated by our own preconditionings similarly ask yourself if your desires which are motivated by sensation are really yours or they are borrowed from outside who decided to go for that food for the sensation of taste alone without checking if it is nurturing for your body is that really you 
because if you had decided on the basis of your natural acceptance would you not have selected food that is nurturing for your body and which was also tasty if you look carefully it is the sensation of taste that is overriding your natural acceptance in that sense the decision is dictated by the sensations of the body it is a state of enslavement that indicates we are enslaved by our own sensations when you ask yourself if your desires which are based on your natural acceptance are really yours or are they borrowed from outside if you decided on shoes to protect your feet and you selected shoes of the right size and shape of your feet it is in line with your natural acceptance for such desires selections you are not influenced by what people say or the conditions outside the latest shoe fashion for pointed shoes high heel shoes the shiniest shoe exteriors etc would not have any influence on your decision or your selection you get an affirmative yes that desires based on your natural acceptance are truly your desires of course such desires would be in line with your basic aspiration for mutual happiness and mutual prosperity at the base so they will be acceptable not only to you but to the other as well this is the state of being self organized organized under the guidance of one's natural acceptance being self organized is not the same as freedom the general sense of freedom is one of doing whatever one desires another aspect of the general sense of freedom is escape from some sort of bondage as we have seen our desires are largely motivated by preconditioning and sensation so there could be a desire to dominate and force the whole class to take a day off would you consider such an action to be a sign of freedom being self organized on the other hand is used specifically for the responsibility one willingly takes in ensuring harmony i am happy to take the responsibility to act in accordance with my natural acceptance it is in the interest of harmony within myself and harmony outside if we make effort for collaborating with our classmates to understand all that is being taught it is in the interest of harmony one can make such choices when one is guided by their natural acceptance the exercise of finding out the accumulated desires coming from preconditioning sensation and natural acceptance will give us an idea of our state of being self organized or being enslaved in other words it will give an idea of how much we are in harmony within and how much we are in disharmony within how much we are in a state of happiness within and how much we are in a state of unhappiness within we will get a reasonable idea about what we are it will also give a good idea about what we need to do to reach to the state of being self organized the state of complete harmony and continuous happiness within the way ahead ensuring harmony in the self by way of self exploration the state of harmony within is harmony in the self and it is desirable once we are in harmony within we are self organized in a state of continuous happiness to reach to this state we need to a know our natural acceptance we have mentioned before that our natural acceptance is for relationship not for opposition for harmony not for disharmony for coexistence not for conflict or struggle in chapter 2 we have referred to natural acceptance as what i really want to be what is naturally acceptable to me b be aware of our imagination 
that is our desired thought and expectation or the activities of imaging, analyzing, comparing and selecting tasting. In chapter 2, we had referred to our imagination in terms of what I am. C. Find out how much of our accumulated imagination is motivated by preconditioning sensation and natural acceptance. This is essentially analyzing what I am. D. Work out a way to sort out our imagination till it is fully in line with our natural acceptance. That is, our desires, thoughts and expectations are in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence and free of opposition, exploitation and conflict. This is basically working out a way to line up what I am with my natural acceptance through the process of dialogue within, that is the process of self-exploration. Harmony in the self is achieved by ensuring harmony between our imagination and our natural acceptance. By ensuring that all imaginations are in line with our natural acceptance. Figure 6. six. Understanding harmony in the self. Detail. The first time reader may choose to skip this part and come back to it in the second reading. Here we are introducing 10 activities of the self. For more details, please refer to the appendices A61 and A62. We have discussed three activities of the self. Desire as the activity of imaging, what I want to be, thought as the activity of analyzing, how to be what I want to be, and the expectation as the activity of selecting what to get, do outside. Here we will try to expand further on thought and expectation. For this, we will try to see basis of analyzing and the basis of selecting. To analyze, we generate options and try to pick one or more of them by comparing them on some criteria. In the example of your desire to be owner of a big house, you thought about how to be owner of a big house. Your options were building a big house, uh, buying a big house, and renting a big house. On the basis of comparing, maybe, can I afford it? Another could be, is this the best use of my money? Like that, you have many criteria for comparing. Using these criteria, you would choose to expand one or more of the options and drop others. The activity of analyzing always goes with the activity of comparing. We can see that thought is about analyzing and comparing together. We will refer to it as analyzing comparing. Find out if it is so for you. Similarly, when we select what to get do outside, we do so on, on the basis of our taste. In the example of expecting a big house, selection is made on the basis of the size, the shape, the color, the finishing, the smoothness, etc. And these depends on the taste you have for each of them. For example, one may have taste for for yellow color, while other may have the taste for blue. So selecting of color is done on the basis of tasting. The activity of selecting is always accompanied with the activity of tasting. Now we can see that expectation is the activity of selecting and tasting together. We will refer to as selecting tasting. Do check it out for yourself. Thought may be invested in generating, that is analyzing and comparing various options 
for a desire. For example, for desire to be owner of a big house, this has already been explained. However, thought may also be invested for working out the details of selection, for refining the selection. Detailing and refining the selection is exemplified below. To get a big house was your expectation. Now, by ensuring your expectation, you felt you will be able to fulfill your, your desire to be owner of a big house. You don't stop at that. Getting a big house, you try to work out the details of the house, the bedroom, a kitchen, a veranda, a bathrooms, and so on. All these analysis, thought, is in reference to the selection of a big house. Can you observe within yourself and see that the activity of imaging, analyzing, comparing, and selecting, tasting are going on in your imagination? If you look at the self, refer to figure 6-7, the activities have been marked in two blocks, B1 and B2. So far, we have been talking about the activities related to the, to the block B2. What I am, my imagination. Desire is the activity of imaging about myself, my state of being, what I want to be as a human being. Thought is the activity of analyzing about how to fulfill my desire to be. Expectation is the activity of selecting the things to do in outside world to fulfill fill my desire. We have been discussing these activities because these are the activities that we are awakened to by and large. If you are having difficulty in being able to see your desire, thoughts and expectations distinctly, find out if it is because you are not fully aware of yourself, of your activities and the content of these activities. These activities together called imagination are governing our harmony, our disharmony within and also outside in terms of our behavior, work and participation in the larger order, in the family, society, nature and existence. The activities marked in block B1 are about what I really want to be related to my natural acceptance. These are the activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. Contemplation is the activity of seeing my participation in the larger order, seeing my relationship with the other human being and my relationship with the rest of nature. Understanding is the activity of seeing harmony in nature, seeing the inherent harmony in every unit in nature. Realization is the activity of seeing the coexistence in nature. If I am awakened to these activities, that is, if I have the right understanding and right feeling, it is my internal guide for all my imagination. I can filter every input that I get from outside. I accept only those inputs which are in line with relationship and ensuring relationship. Inputs which are in line with harmony and ensuring harmony and inputs which are in line with coexistence and ensure coexistence. This internal guide is shown by the arrow from B1 to B2. This is a very important arrow. This is what we have to awaken to. Uh, if uh, you observe the self which is awakened only by B2, it is uh, partly in harmony, but largely in disharmony and unhappiness. This unhappiness is not naturally acceptable. So it tries various means to achieve happiness or escape from unhappiness, as we discussed in Chapter 4. The solution is to realize our innate potential to awaken to the higher activities of contemplation, understanding and realization to a self that is awakened to B1 and B2. 
this is what we are referring to as a self with human consciousness so this is self evolution in human being that is self awakening to all its activities this self evolution is facilitated by self exploration which is what we have been trying to initiate the evolved self is shown in figure 6 7 sanskar in this context it is pertinent to mention that at any point our state of being can be articulated as the accumulation of our acceptances that is our sanskar which can be expressed as follows sanskar is equal to a acceptances derived out of all desires from all time plus thought from all time plus expectation from all time and b acceptances born out of right understanding right understanding of a reality includes contemplation of its relationship or participation in the larger order understanding of the harmony and realization of coexistence in existence of that particular reality if we do not have completeness of right understanding then we may have discordant assumptions about relationship harmony and or coexistence example we may assume that there is a struggle instead of coexistence in existence there is a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest there is conflict and contradiction rather than harmony in nature and there is need for opposition competition domination and exploitation rather than relationship in human interaction with other human beings or rest of nature in general these assumptions form a strong part of our sanskar if our sanskar is not based on our natural acceptance and right understanding then our preconditionings and sanskar may be that we can derive happiness out of pleasing sensations or getting pleasant feelings from other human beings as a result our feeling thought selection behavior work and participation in the larger order will depend on these sanskar This seems to be the case today for most of us. Sanskar is being updated every moment over time. We have some sanskar at the moment t. At the next moment t plus one, our sanskar can be articulated as sanskar of t plus one is equal to sanskar at the time t plus environment at time t plus self exploration at time t that is our sanskar at the next moment that is t plus 1 is a result of our sanskar at the present moment t the environment we are in at the present moment as well as the self exploration self verification we do at the present moment these acceptances or sanskar may or may not be in line with our natural acceptances if you are doing the self exploration based on our natural acceptance sanskar generated out of this will be harmonious and therefore our sanskar at the next moment will be more harmonious than our sanskar now on the other hand if you are just assuming things without self verification even then we will have an updated sanskar in the next moment but that sanskar may or may not be better than our current sanskar it can be worse if you are assuming things based on wrong preconditioning or sensation for example we keep getting input from the social environment like do not trust anyone these inputs may be coming from parents other family members 
friends, social media, etc. The fear is that if you trust someone blindly, they may take advantage of you or even harm you. Incidents of such events are reported frequently in the media. By getting this input again and again, it may become a part of our imagination. As a result, at one point of time, we may develop the acceptance for it. Now, do not trust anyone becomes a part of our sanskar and it continues with us. It now mistrust becomes the basis for many of our imagination and many of our decisions are based on this sanskar. If we ask ourselves, is the feeling of trust naturally acceptable to me or the feeling of mistrust is naturally acceptable to me? When we do the self-exploration on this question and in our self-verification, we find that it is the feeling of trust that is naturally acceptable. We develop the acceptance for the feeling of trust. Hence our previous sanskar, do not trust anyone, gets updated to the feeling of trust rather than mistrust. In this way, our sanskar is modified. You can refer to chapter 8 for some more details about the feeling of trust for your own self-verification. The key input for self-exploration has to come either from within the self, specifically from B1 or as proposals which are based on what someone else has seen at the level of their B1 that is at the level of activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. Then only will it lead to lasting improvement in our sanskar. We tend to stay in our comfort zone to accept proposals that match our existing beliefs and to discard proposals that don't seem to match, thereby deepening the existing preconditioning, existing beliefs, existing sanskar. If we take the inputs from the other as proposals, for self-exploration, we slowly understand and our sanskar also gets improved. That is having lesser unverified assumptions and the self is more in harmony within. Even with only B2 active, with effort, we can look into our natural acceptance. We get the answers when we try, when we explore within. Clearly, we see that we have a natural acceptance for one relationship, two harmony and three coexistence. We have a natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment in relationship and not for opposition. In chapter 8 on harmony in family, we will explore into relationship in detail. We will see that we have a natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment in relationship with human being. In chapter 9, we will see that we have a natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature as well. The clarity about relationship is awakening to the activity of contemplation. We have a natural acceptance for harmony and not for disharmony, not for exploitation. In chapter 10, we will explore into the harmony in nature in detail. The clarity of harmony reflected as mutual enrichment at the level of nature is awakening to the activity of understanding. We have a natural acceptance for coexistence and not for conflict, not for struggle. In chapter 11, we will explore into the harmony in existence. The clarity of coexistence in existence is awakening to the activity of realization. With all the activities of B1 awakened, B1 becomes the guide for our imagination of B2. One more work that needs to be done along with the awakening to B1 is to sort out the sanskar, the prior accumulated acceptances. If you observe carefully, we can realize that we have accumulated a lot of these acceptances which are resulting in numerous desires, thoughts and expectations. What has happened is that very unconsciously, without awareness, 
we have accumulated a lot of these acceptances. Many of these acceptances are contrary to each other and also not in line with our natural acceptance. And we are not even aware of them. We have accumulated so many acceptances and all of them put together are what we are calling sanskar. Each one of us has a lot of accumulated acceptances, accumulated sanskar. Our preconditioning, our perspective, our tendencies are all a part of expressions of our sanskar. One person may have the tendency to share, it is what her sanskar is. Another person may have the tendency to hoard, that is his sanskar. The self is working with all the accumulations, the sanskar. So many of our imaginations are springing out because of our accumulated sanskar is being triggered either by myself or some situation outside. If you are unaware of our sanskar or the inputs we are taking from outside, then we may not be able to see where our imagination came from. To work toward harmony in the self, it is essential to be aware of our imagination and our sanskar and sort it out layer after layer. That means we have to sort out our imaginations our sanskar and make sure that we keep only what is in line with our natural acceptance and the rest is evaluated out. The seed or root of the imagination is the desire. As we have seen, a small desire expands in thought and further expands in expectation. Now if we find contradictions in the imagination, the best place to check is the desire. This desire needs to connect to our natural or existential purpose. That is what we have been hinting at when we introduced natural acceptance. Also, desire connects to our feeling in relationship which we will explore in more detail in chapter 8. To check whether some selections or some thoughts will lead to harmony or not, it is best to check the desire which has given rise to these thoughts and expectations. Is it born out of a naturally acceptable feeling or not? Is it for a human purpose or not? For example, if you are thinking of how to express respect to your mother, the desire behind it is a desire for living with respect. Since respect is a naturally acceptable feeling, this desire will lead to harmony. And thoughts to fulfill this desire will also lead to harmony and happiness. On the other hand, if you are thinking of expressing disrespect to your mother, the desire behind this thought is living with disrespect. Since this desire is conflicting with the innate desire for feeling of respect, this desire will lead to disharmony. The thought of disrespect will lead to disharmony and unhappiness. Of course, if you are not aware or if you are not referring to our natural acceptance, if you are not having that internal dialogue, we may find out the result right now or after some time, even many days and many years. It, is just, it just means that we are either unaware of our imagination at that moment or we are not checking whether it is in line with our natural acceptance or not, that is whether it will lead to harmony or not. One of the simple ways to do this check is to find out the source of motivation for the desire. Is it preconditioning or sensation or self-verification on the basis of our natural acceptance. Because without this awareness, without this dialogue, desires are being motivated from all these three sources. In the meanwhile, without much of awareness, we have accumulated a lot of desires. Some are in line with our purpose and naturally acceptable feelings in relationship, while others are not. With awareness and with 
the internal dialogue every moment, the sanskar can be cleaned out. When both the following parts are complete, we are in harmony within, in a state of continuous happiness, in human consciousness. These two parts are 1. The activities in block B1 have been awakened. We have the right understanding of the relationship, harmony and coexistence, which is mutual fulfillment. With that, this right understanding has become the guide for B2, which is our imagination. So now we have the right feeling and a right thought. 2. We have sorted out our sanskar, that is all our sanskar are now in line with our existential purpose and naturally acceptable feelings. Our sanskar are only in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. Then we are able to participate for mutual fulfillment with the world outside. It means that our behavior with human being will lead to mutual happiness, work with the rest of nature will lead to mutual prosperity and our participation in larger order will lead to the fulfillment of human goal which ultimately will lead to the undivided society and universal human order. An undivided society and universal human order can be ensured on the basis of understanding of the harmony in existence as coexistence, in nature as harmony and in our relationship with the other human being and with the rest of the nature as mutual fulfillment. We will explore these in detail as we go on. We have just mentioned this to give you a feel that ultimately this is how our imagination will look like. This is how the state of the self will look like. This is how our conduct will look like and that would be the final result of it. One end of it is the realization of coexistence in existence, understanding of harmony in nature and contemplation of a relationship in the self and the other end is the undivided human society and universal human order. One of the ways you can find out your state of being is to do the practice session on finding out how much of the desires, thoughts and expectations are motivated by preconditioning, sensation and natural acceptance. It is included in the practice sessions for this chapter. More on Sanskar in Appendix A62.